Hi guys, it's CNN Online here for another gaming review. Today we're looking at one of the latest fighting titles from Bandai Namco, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. Do save a mouthful, every time I say that name we'll be shorting it to JoJo for the rest of the video. So what is JoJo's? Well, JoJo's is a popular manga series written by Hikari Araki, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which eventually had an anime adaption made for it. JoJo's follows the adventures of the Joestars, spanning several of their generations, with each generation of the Joestars having their own part of the manga alongside new supporting characters. We haven't seen JoJo's ourselves personally, nor at the manga, though we're still eager to jump straight into the game, and was it worth it in the end? Well, let's go find out. When you jump onto the game, you're presented with the following options. Story, Campaign, Versus, Practice, Customize, Gallery, and Options. So to start, let's have a look at each section in some more detail. Story mode is our first stop. If you select story, you're brought to another menu allowing you to select which part you want to play. The part names represent that of the arcs in the manga, and there are seven parts overall which you can play. Inside each part, there are several missions which are called episodes. Episodes are missions where you're presented with the story of what is happening in that current arc, and then are thrown into a fight for that story. Each episode has a labelled difficulty with D being easy, while A is very hard. The story mode is incredibly fun, and believe me, whilst starting easy does get incredibly difficult pretty quickly. After completing a mission, you're able to hit the triangle button on your PS3 controller to toggle to another battle, a mode with the player character and enemy reverse. So, for example, the episode was a battle between Jonathan and Zeppeli, let's say, where the player plays as Jonathan. When another battle is toggled on, the player will play as Zeppeli versus Jonathan. It adds to the replayability and is much more challenging than the original battle. Story battles allow for you to use support effects also, and these are boosts for yourself to make the fight somewhat easier. In order to purchase support effects, you will need gold which you can earn from competing in battles, with the catch being you can only use three in one battle. Though another catch is if you're using large support effects, any small support effects will be overridden. Effects can be anything from making your health automatically recover in battle, to lowering enemies' health. Use the support effects wisely and you'll be able to even the odds in those tough fights if need be. Next up is campaign mode, which we didn't really explore as fully as the main story mode, though it allows you to participate in battles to win medals on PlayStation Network to show your skills. As you play through the campaign, you'll gain more experience and be able to take on harder battles and beat other players in avatar battles, which take place automatically over the net. Campaign mode packs can be downloaded from the PlayStation Store, with Campaign Pack 2 being advertised as available for free download as of this review. Versus mode is up next, and as you can imagine, it's your normal versus mode. When you select versus, the game asks if you wanted to go online or offline. But in online, you can do player matches which pair you up with players regardless of your rank. Or you can do ranked matches, which pairs you with players regarding your rank. Online battles were thoroughly enjoyable and even taught me how awful I was at the game, which I thought was pretty good at. Obviously this can be down to my internet, though there was never any lag whatsoever when playing online. And it was always a smooth and pleasurable experience. Let's take a look at offline mode next. When you select offline, you'll be presented with player vs com, player vs player, or com vs com. Player vs com, as you'd expect, lets you face the computer, Plus, Com vs Com allows you to watch two computer players fight each other. The mode we're going to look at in a bit more depth though is PvP or Player vs Player. The Player vs Player option allows two humans to pit it out against each other to see who the true champion really is. You'll both be able to choose a character from the list of unlocked characters on the save file and then choose which stage you want to jump into. It's pretty simple and very easy to get straight into. The versus mode is extremely quick and easy to jump in and play, which is a huge benefit when you're trying to start a game with your mates, and it was a really fun mode that I managed to convince a lot of my friends to jump into, even those that didn't know what the hell a JoJo's was. Practice mode is a great way to practice your skills, you're pitted against the computer, though they will not retaliate and their health will recover. This mode is more suited for those who want to learn the controls and try to master combos for later usage. Next up, Customize mode allows you to use unlocked medals from the campaign mode to modify characters. And now onto the gallery. Gallery allows you to do several things and is a pretty neat mode. You can view models of the characters from the game, listen to the background music or characters' voices, view action shots and advertisements from the game, read a glossary about the world of JoJo's and spend your gold on more gallery items. The gallery is very in-depth and has a ton of content, though obviously this is more for a JoJo's fan to enjoy than those who would pick this up just as a fighter. Finally, options. My favourite mode of the game, I kid. Here you're able to change many of the game's options, such as the controls and your sound options. Well, that's pretty much JoJo summed up, so let's move on to the positives and the negatives. Positives, the game has a great story mode with good replayability. In-depth and excellent gallery mode. Caters to those new to fighters with support effects. Lag-free and very enjoyable multiplayer modes. Negative, difficulty rises very drastically. Those new to fighters may find it a bit of a struggle to get used to. 
Whilst we had never watched the anime or read the manga for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, we openly welcomed JoJo's All-Star Battle as a fighter game to experience. Unlike other fighters though, the story mode did a great job at keeping those not in the loop with the story up to date, but when playing we felt like we knew enough about the story to understand what was going on. Whilst the game's difficulty rises very drastically, making new players have a harder time to adapt, the game was very brilliantly made, with a great story mode, tons of replayability, and an in-depth and fully excellently made gallery mode. It even had leg free online battles, which is pretty rare in a lot of online fighters I play these days. If you're a fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, you'll want to make sure you grab a copy of this game, especially if you're a fighter fan too. The game is fully catered towards its fans, and personally does a great job at offering a lot in regards to the JoJo's universe. If you're not a fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure though, I'll be honest, this game may not be for you. Whilst the story does keep a good job at keeping you up to date with what's going on, you may still feel slightly lost with some of the terms used. Though, if you're keen on fighters, this game is definitely worth a try, as it is an enjoyable experience and a great all-round fighter. For those reasons, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle is going to get a CNN score of 4 out of 5. Thanks for watching guys, feel free to leave comments down below, we love talking to you, and if you want to know any more about the game, please ask. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. This is CNN Online, signing off.